Welcome to Autumn Acres Mini Pet Pigs YouTube channel. My name is Autumn. I am a very small mini pig breeder in Minerva, Ohio. I have four litters a year, but I'm also a pet pig trainer and behavior expert. I do consultations with people all over the world. And so if you're having trouble with your pig, please find me either on social media, Instagram, Facebook, or my website, autumnacresminipetpigs.com and reach out to me and I will, I would love to help you. I'm going to answer the question, do mini pigs stay small? Because this is a question that I get a lot. And this is something that people really need to understand before they decide to bring a pet pig into their home. So to answer that question, do mini pigs stay small? I'm going to say it depends. It depends on three things. The first thing that it depends on is your expectations. What do you mean by small? Do you mean tiny pocket size, purse size? If that's the case, the answer is no. Mini pigs grow and they should. Any pig that stays tiny, something is wrong with it. There are many breeders that, you know, due to the fact that people are obsessed with a small pig, breeders have stepped in and kind of taken taken it upon themselves to make a small pig, but unfortunately they do it in the wrong way. They do it by inbreeding, which yes, does cause pigs to stay smaller, but by that means they're very, very unhealthy. They usually have lots of uh, deformities. They have issues all over the place. These are things that you do not want to have to deal with. Um, they're very expensive if you try to get them fixed or cared for by a vet or a specialist. And the poor pigs, I mean, this is not their fault. And yet they have to deal with these horrible issues. Um, or another thing that breeders do is they will pull the piglets off their mom a day old, sometimes from birth, a day old, a couple days old, a week old. And what they'll do is they'll give them a food that is technically for elderly pigs that has very little fat in it. So it causes the pigs to be smaller because their growth is stunted because just like any other baby animal or even people for that matter, baby pigs need fat they need fat in order to function properly. You know, our brains are made of fat. Our hormones, many of our hormones are made of cholesterol. So it's important that piglets have that fat that they need from their mother is a perfect source. And so because that fatty milk from their mother tends to make them grow fast and makes them grow chubby, then um, a lot of breeders will pull them off and not allow them to be with their mom, which is completely unethical. Um, anybody who sells teacup pigs at a day old, a week old, or just a couple weeks old is completely unethical. And that's not my opinion. That is fact. Nobody should do that. So when it comes to expectations for how big our pig will grow, we need to realize that a pig that stays tiny is not healthy. A pig that grows is healthier. Um, the average standard for a mini pig is any pig under 300 pounds. So uh, yeah, let that blow your mind for a second. Any pig under 300 pounds is categorized as a mini pig. So if those are not your expectations, if you do not want a pig in your house that is going to grow, and I'm not saying that every, every pig grows to 300 pounds, that's also not a fact. Um, the fact is that Around 100 pounds is a great size for a mini pig. That's actually a pretty small mini pig. Remember that when it comes to poundage, we can't rely on what a dog looks like at a certain weight to think that that's what our pig will look like because pigs are built completely different from a dog. They hold their, <laughs> they're very stocky. They're very chubby. They hold weight in places that dogs don't. So 
comparatively with size, they're much heavier than they look. Um, if you have been told that your mini pig or your teacup pig will not grow more than 35 pounds or even more than 50 pounds, either someone is lying to you or they have taken measures to make sure that that is the truth. So they have inbred or they have starved these poor piglets to keep them small. Another thing to keep in mind is that um, another thing that really matters, I should say, the depending portion of the question, does a mini pig stay small, is it depends on where you get your pig from. So ideally, you want to get a pig that is from an ethical, excellent breeder, not a good breeder, an excellent breeder. And let me tell you, there are very, very few of those very few. I can probably count on one hand the amount of excellent breeders that I've seen um, in this world, the pig world. Now, there are also, if you're very concerned about size, something that you could do is you could go to a rescue and you could find a pig that's full grown. And that way you don't have to worry about it growing to a size that you can't manage. Now, hereditary measures or hereditary points are also make a big difference when it comes to size. So has a particular piglet, has it been bred with, a, has the, is one of the parents a pot belly or in its lineage, in its line, does it have pot belly in it somewhere? Does it have farm hog in it? Does it have coon coon in it? Does it have Duroc in it? Does it have Mangalitsa in it? What kinds of breeds of pigs are in the background of this piglet? That makes a big difference. Um, and those are not always things that we know. Those are not always things that you're going to find out. Those are not things that every breeder keeps record of or that every breeder knows because, you know, we get our breeding stock from someone as well. Another big depending factor is diet and exercise. You know, um, a pig, like a farm hog, how does a farmer get it to grow to 600 pounds? They constantly feed it. They're feeding it constantly, huge, massive amounts of food, or they give it free reign to the feed. And then what does a pig do? They're going to eat until they're stuffed every single day. And so what that does is, is it causes the pig to grow bigger faster. That is how a pig works. Now, mini pigs have the same genetics. So when it comes to a mini pig, you know, when we have farmers that are growing hogs for processing, those pigs have a purpose, right? They have a purpose. Now, when we bring a pig in the house, this pig has a completely different person purpose. We are not trying to fatten this pig up. We want it as a pet. We want it to be healthy. We want it to live as long as possible. We want to enjoy our pig. So overfeeding is a huge problem, huge problem. Because what, what happens is people drive by these farms and they say, oh my gosh, look at that pig. It's so fat. It's so cute. And they think that that's what a pig, a healthy pig looks like, but it's not. A healthy pig should actually be lean, not skinny. You should not see spine. You should not see hip bones. You should not, the, the back end should not be shaped like a torpedo. It should be rounded. It should keep its head high. It shouldn't keep its head low resting on the ground because it has no strength to pick its head up. I'm not talking skinny. I'm talking lean. A pet pig, if it's going to be healthy, should be lean. It should not be fat. It should not be overweight. So many issues come in when you have a pig and you overfeed it just by even a little bit. Pigs get this fat pad on their forehead that when it gets so big, it rolls down and it rolls over their eyes and it causes them to not be able to see. Pigs already can't see the greatest. So if you are literally pushing their eyes closed because of the fat pad on their forehead, then 
these are all other issues, you know, um, a pig that can't see is going to be extra fearful. So there's all kinds of things to think about here, but when it comes to the size of a pig, we need to remember, we need to keep our expectations realistic. Can we, can we bring home a pig that's going to be 75 pounds, 80 pounds, a hundred pounds? Again, that's smaller than a golden retriever in a, in a, in a pig, um, a hundred pound pig is going to be about the size of an English bulldog. Okay. Millions of people have English bulldogs in their house. They're not a big deal. Um, in our house, we have a pig. Her name is Topanga. She is, I would say she's probably 75 pounds. She's four years old. She may grow a little bit more because pigs grow to their five. So all of these things need to be considered before bringing a pig home. Remember, keep your expectations realistic. Pick an ethical breeder, not a good breeder, an excellent breeder. Pick an excellent breeder because then you're going to have way less health problems. You're going to have way less issues. And the third thing to keep in mind is that diet and exercise are very important for a pig. Keeping your pig lean, making sure they can be outside and run around and play and root around in the grass and the sunshine can hit their skin. All of these things are important to the health of your pig. So by doing these three things, then we're going to realize that a mini pig stays small comparatively because remember, a mini pig is any pig under 300 pounds. That's much, much smaller than a farm hog. And when it comes to um, understanding that a mini pig is not a teacup pig, which a teacup pig doesn't exist, a mini pig is a pig much smaller than a farm hog, but it does not stay tiny. It does, is not going to fit in your pocket. It is not going to fit in your purse. You may not even be able to pick your pig up when it's full grown. So keep these things in mind. Now, if you're having issues with your pig, if you're having behavioral issues, if you're considering a mini pig, if you whatever, if you have any questions about a mini pig, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, as I mentioned before, you can find me on Instagram, Facebook, Mighty Networks, um, here on YouTube, all under the same heading, which is Autumn Acres Mini Pet Pigs. And then my website is autumnacresminipetpigs.com. And there are places where you can get a hold of me there. So as always, I thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you next time.